crew of the HMN ZS Waikato. There's just time to make final preparations before they leave on gunnery exercises. According to schedule, the frigate slips out of Falamong, the naval base. From the bridge, the officers control the movement of the ship. Launched in 1969, the Waikato was the first Leander-class frigate built for the Royal New Zealand Navy. In a recent refit, a closed-circuit television system and sophisticated navigation equipment were installed. Moving up harbour, our first destination is to be Cowrie Point. No, the bus is not on the motorway. It's bringing Auckland's North Shore commuters across to the city on the Harbour Bridge. From up there, they must have a good view of us on the water. Sightings are essential to control the frigate's precise direction in the narrow channel. Is there going to be room for us under here? It looks as if we're very close to touching, but there's no question of that. We and the high radar on the mast glide gracefully through. and horsepower, it doesn't take long to cruise up harbour. The Waikato is capable of travelling at a speed of 30 knots. sighting guide. On deck, the sailors have assigned tasks in preparation for our arrival. With their controlled communication system, everything is ready for our berthing at the wharf. With a crew of 260, there's no shortage of hands. And on the wharf too, preparations are being made. As the ship secures its berth lines, staff take care to ensure that the supplies are delivered on the schedule. are raised. They're a warning signal, internationally recognised. Other ships are advised to keep well away from the area. And the reason for the danger sign? The Waikato is about to load a supply of ammunition to be used in the gunnery training at sea. There are two parts to the explosives, the explosive warheads and the cartridge shells. Inside these crates are the blue warheads. The cartridge shells are of brass. Out of their protective containers, they're ready to load on board. The cartridge shells must be carefully handled one by one. The crane does the heavy lifting of the warheads. 
While the work continued, I had time to consider the qualities of a gunner. From a treatise written in the 16th century on the art of shooting, we learn that a gunner ought to be a sober, hardy, patient, prudent, quick-spirited man with good eyesight and judgment. He should also forbid, with meek and courteous speeches, all manner of persons, other than his assistants, to come near his pieces. Finally, every gunner should know that it is a wholesome thing for him to drink and eat a little meat before he doth discharge any piece of artillery. Just time for a little touch-up as the last explosives are loaded and we're away. Time again to check our course and time too to salute HMNZ Philomel as we sail past. I wonder who's watching us through binoculars over there. there's activity of a different sort. Hundreds of meals for the hungry crew are prepared in the galley by trained chefs each day. With another meal about to be served, I talked to Chef Dick Jones. Dick, this place is a high of activity. How many people do you have working here? We have about uh, six chefs all together uh, working a uh, full watch system. And at lunchtime, we have pantry uh, hands and that they come and they get the meal for the officers and the senior agents. About ranges on an average of about 250. Uh, it varies sometimes when we have like yourself and see they have more. Uh, the uh, uh, what's on the menu today? Uh, we've got sweet and sour fish, um, braised with steak and durum cutlets, and the veg is uh, spinach and sweet. We've got mashed and more potatoes. Plus, we have cold meat and salad as well. Everybody. Sounds great. Yeah. So, I decided to taste their wares. After a sample snack, I popped down to the laundry. Mr. Shu, how long have you been working for the Navy? I work in Royal New Zealand Navy for very close 25 years. Okay, that's amazing. You've got one assistant with you. Yes. How many uniforms would you launder in a day? Uh, most of it do the, uh, over the 400 every day. That's Monday and Tuesday. That's after the weekend? Yes. Uh, what about shirts? Shirts are we can earn about 120 between 150 per mm -hmm. day. And they're not done on the press, are no, they? No, no, we do it by hand. Earn by hand. Don't you ever really get sick of it? No. <laughs> well, I certainly would. 150 shirts a day, seven days a week for 25 years. That means he's earned about 1,368,750 shirts so far. Commander Leonard, where did you start your training? Initially in Australia, I left school when I was 16 and went to the Australian Naval College for nearly four years as a cadet midshipman. Went to sea for a year as a midshipman and then England for two years. And so all in all, I was training for about seven years. Now, what, what did you go to England? Was it as a seaman? Or? As a seaman, yes. Now, you actually made the change from a seamanship to flying, didn't you? Yes, in the Navy. Aviating is a subspecialization of the uh, seaman branch. Before you can start flying, you have to be a qualified watchkeeping officer, able to take charge of a ship on the bridge. And uh, I started flying in about um, 67, I suppose, and flew for about 10 years. When did you stop flying and return to your seaman role? About four or five years ago. Mm. Did you automatically become commander of the Waikato? No. Not that um, easy. Not quite that easy. <laughs> I went to Otago first as, as the executive officer, and then after nearly uh, 18 months there, I was lucky enough to be commander of Waikato. Uh, what do you enjoy most, flying or being commander of Waikato? Uh, that's a pretty hard question, but uh, unquestionably, I think this is the best job in the Navy. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it actually. Commander, can you explain to me what this exercise this afternoon entails? Yes, we're taking some gunnery training classes to see in order that they can put into practice all the theory that they've been learning in the classroom ashore. And we'll be doing various types of firings. The particular one you'll be seeing this afternoon is an anti-aircraft firing, where there is a target towed by an aeroplane. We'll be shooting at the target. Right. Hopefully we'll hit it.
far out to sea, the gunners are preparing their sights. Deep down below in the magazine, the signal to raise the explosives has been received. Wearing protective anti-flash gear is essential for all those engaged in the gunnery exercise. Out of the chutes, the warheads are assembled for the first time with the cartridge cases and sent on command to the gun turret above. sighted visually and then the radar is locked onto it. Then and only then will fire control commence the exercise. At any moment, the action is about to begin. 